What is going on, everyone? Let me, whoa, let me fix my microphone, my camera here. All right. Um, maybe that's going to work. Let's fight. Let me adjust that a little bit. All right. That's going to have to do for the program. Welcome, everybody, on a Wednesday night. Or afternoon, wherever you guys are at. It is Wednesday, March 29th, 2023. And uh, you know what? This is what would help. Let me set my seat up. There we go. I feel a little bit better. And we're going to have to deal with the microphone. Well, not the mic. But the camera issue this episode. And that is because... I wanted to make sure that I highlighted the background moving forward. You see here on what is it? The right side of your screen. I got, got a poster up, got a couple of banners up and I'm ready to go. And it's kind of a new, you know, it's an exciting time because we are officially 20, less than 24 hours away from the opening day pirates reds hunter green two of young um pitchers making it through the big leagues <clears throat> and i'm excited i don't know how you guys all feel but wherever you guys are at if you guys support and you guys watch baseball then this is that time of year you know, I had a good opportunity and um, ended up taking uh, the, the wife out to her first uh, baseball game of the year. We actually went out last night to uh, Cincinnati and Louisville last night. And, you know, it was pretty chilly. It was a kind of a cold night, but it was an exciting time. It was our first it was my first time attending a college baseball game. It was her first time going to uh, attending a baseball game in general. And it was kind of a nice atmosphere. Just her and I, we went down to UC base, uh, UC baseball stadium, great parking uh, in the garages paid like, I don't know, like seven bucks for what a little over two and a half hours, almost three. Uh, and then, um, you know, we got there, we uh, ch- checked on in, uh, got her a, a Cincinnati hoodie, which you know she's excited about. Got a, got end up getting. Um, I think the most we spent was like thirty dollars on the food wise, but it was just. I think it was just kind of fun to get out to a baseball game, and you know, for me, regardless of if it's little league, if it's high school, and or if it's, um, you know, college or professional, just being able to get out to a ball game, I I think is much needed. You know, I I don't make uh, an incredible amount of money. Uh, The tickets, I got two tickets for $4, spent about, plus parking on a, probably spent about $40 all together between the food and the, and and this was our first time going. So food was kind of, um, you know, we, we got, I got a hot dog, the, the, the water. I mean, I would, the only thing I would say that was a bad experience was the bottle water and the Gatorade were $5. And I understand the Gatorade, but the bottle of water was $5. And I'm like, that's more expensive than what you, the, than the hot dog that was $4. And so I was kind of, I guess, 
a little bummed out about that. Um, but it was a good all overall experience. Now the Reds, the Bearcats did not go on and um, win like we wanted them to, but it was also uh, fun just to be able to watch Louisville and the, the Cardinals um, just do, you know, the Cardinals take on the Bearcats last night. And so it was kind of cool. We kind of left around. It was like, it was a blowout game. I think it was like, we left, it was like 14 to two or something like that, 14 to one. And it was just, car- the Cardinals were just hitting home bombs left and right, left and right. So <clears throat> if it's not raining on a Friday, I'm going to try to head it back out there again. They face uh, Wichita, Wichita State uh, in a three-game series. So, uh, you know, hey, it's baseball season, you guys. And I can't, if you're, if you're looking to head down to a ball game, check out high school uh, high school games. Uh, I know they're fascinating to watch. College, uh, depending where you're at, depends how expensive they are. And it wasn't a big stadium. But then you kind of got to see, you know, how everything else is configured for UC. Uh, UC, uh, for UC. So got the uh, poster that has their schedule up. Uh, that's what we're going to keep up for the remainder of right now baseball year if you guys got interesting sports posters send them my way right now i mean i was just i just took down the t-shirt i may put find something else for that later on but took that down it it is baseball season you see the breads you see the padres you see the angels up um you know and and i'm just excited I'm, i'm happy for what uh we have to offer this baseball season and like i said we're 20 we're less than 24 hours away from talking uh, Cincinnati Reds and St. Louis uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. So here's my understanding. I wanted to get, and I completely forgot this. One thing I was a little bummed about a couple weeks ago was that this whole new package plan to watch Major Major League Baseball games. Now I get get Hulu, okay? And um, I have Hulu TV. And it's a, it's a good it's a good app, and if you you know I, I a couple years ago I had Sling TV, and Sling didn't provide any local channels, so I couldn't watch you know um, the you know I couldn't watch football, and so what I did is I moved a couple years ago, I changed to about two years ago I changed to Hulu TV, Hulu TV gives me uh, the ability to get check out the local you know. Fox, you know, Fox News, um, WLW, um, you know, channel. And what I noticed that, you know, and so other than the games that are played on ESPN or FS1 or Fox, I don't get baseball games. I, I go, I refer to the um, MLB TV. And because I'm subscribed with T-Mobile, Next Tuesday, every year you get the basic, you know, hey, here's your out of market games. If it's in the market, you can't you can't watch it. You can watch it in the archives, but you can't watch it live then and there. And then you also get the audio games. So if you're, you know, if I'm driving in the car or if I'm I can listen to the Reds, you know, an audio. I can't watch them, but I can listen to them. And MLB has a package where if you even want to get your market games, it's going to be like one hundred and fifty bucks the entire year. I don't think that's a bad price. I like the price. I just don't have 150 bucks to drop. Uh, and not really knowing the schedule that I have, I think it's kind of a bit bit much to, to commit to. So I'm not really committed all the way to the, uh, the highest package. So, but I, my brother called me up today and uh, getting ready for the show. I was making lunch and he, he shoot me up. He was like, are you getting the MLB TV? I no longer had T-Mobile. And I'm like, oh man, I forgot about that. So I checked that today. And, and yes, T-Mobile is once again uh, relaunching MLB TV, a free, um, you get free games, uh, whatever that package plan includes, uh, you'll find out uh, April 4th, next Tuesday. And it launches at 6 a.m. So if you are a, um, so you just have to endure five days of watching, you know, trying to only watch sports that's on TV if you guys are baseball fans. 
And it's going to be a busy week. And and that's fine. I think that's fine for me because I don't want to be distracted by baseball over the weekend, although I will be paying attention to it. But I want to be invested into WrestleMania. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. But so I I was scrolling through my channel. I was trying, uh, you know, a, a couple of days ago, I was trying to figure out any games that were going to be on TV. Now, I do see a couple of games. But my, in you know, immediate reaction went through the roof when I saw the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates opening day being held on WLW, and I'm like, oh wow, you know, for probably the only game, unless it's on primetime TV such as ESPN or Fox or you know FS1, I I'm gonna sit down and watch it, and you know, last year. If you guys are new to listening to the program, I would call baseball games um, to give you, you know, and I, some people will give, you know, will listen to them, you know. And so I'm looking towards kicking my broadcast, my version of the base baseball games, I guess, you know, tomorrow. Now, the only thing that I think gets me worried is if, It becomes a blackout, you know, for whatever reason, you know, but I guess WLW, the local news stations are to have the, um, the parade. And so, and then also followed by the game and I'm excited for it. So if everything goes well tomorrow, I will be beginning my season off on broadcasting between the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Okay. Now you're not going to go see any, you know, we, I may, throw the the game tracker up this year so that you guys can see uh what's given and whatnot and our time start uh slot may be exactly at 4 p.m because i don't want to go do a pre-game show and then come to find out that hulu doesn't support it so you know there's some things that um some channels and some programs like throughout the winter there's you know programs on the you know local channel so Right now, I don't want, don't quote me. I'm looking forward to it. I want to call it. If not, there is an additional, I believe it's the Braves game. And I'll have to confirm that throughout the program. But there's a game tomorrow night that I will end up calling instead of the Reds and the Pirates. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the Reds and the Pirates. All right. So we are halfway through the week in about two hours. AEW Dynamite is on the, you know, it will begin. Okay. We got college baseball on in the background. Um, I don't know what teams are playing. Lost track. Uh, who's playing? Yeah, not even going to try to butcher that. Anyways, so we got baseball on. I'm kind of sit down. I got my dinner. Uh, we're doing a show in the afternoon because... I've been waiting around for the maintenance man to come up and uh, take a look at our dishwasher. If you guys were tuned into yesterday, you guys uh, um, found out that I took like a 20 minute break with a commercial break looping because we thought that the maintenance man was here. There was a maintenance vehicle downstairs and we thought, all right, they're going to come up and look at it. And so I was going to going to step away until they, you know, took, took a look. But, and so I don't want, see, I'm doing it. I'm doing this broadcast. I'm doing this show from the luxury space of the living room. I'm in a corner of a living room. I got the TV here. The couch is over there. Um, you know, the sliding door and the windows are back over here. So, I mean, I don't want the, the maintenance man to come while I'm doing a live program. I don't think that that is proper etiquette. And yesterday I tried putting a note on the door saying, hey, please come back afterwards. I don't know if that, you know, they read it. If not, I, I don't have no idea. But uh, so I was lingering around today, you know, took the took the wife to work and, um, you know, t- got what I needed to get done. Um, and so this is why we're doing an afternoon program. So pretty impactful two hours. Got a lot to talk about. Hopefully tomorrow we'll do a morning program. Give me the time to rest. Give me the time to prepare for the for the Reds and the Pirates uh, tomorrow afternoon, if not the alternative game. And I'll keep you guys posted of what we're planning on doing. Um, 
But we got uh, some baseball to talk about. Now, we sat there and we talked plenty about the all the rest of the division, the rest of the National League Central. We talked about the Pirates, the Cubs, the Brewers, and the Cardinals. And boy, I'll tell you, as we advance each day, and we talked about them in that order, I was getting like, oh, no. Okay, comparing the Cardinals roster and like their rotation against the guys that we have kind of was like like it it popped out my eyes. I was like, oh, no. So I want to talk about I think it's time to talk about the Reds time to talk about where the Reds at the month of April, how we expect them to play, uh, you know, the series and how we expect them to win the series. So the first segment of today's program, uh, coming back from break, we're going to be talking strictly about the Cincinnati Reds. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we will give you, uh, you know, Nick Crawl had a couple of Q&A segments um, that we will share with you. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll visit some um, NFL rule changes for 2023 that was got got approved. I'm not going to go over the entire list. I'll go over just a small amount of them to get us through the segment at the top of our number two. Uh, yesterday, we took a look at 10 superstar or 10 uh, wrestlers who could be called up from the NXT roster to the main roster post WrestleMania. Today, we will look at the top 10 superstars who could debut or return after WrestleMania. So um, a more broader standpoint, uh, we'll also talk some WrestleMania matches. We got four more matches that we're going to talk about tonight uh, and and all that good stuff. So we have ourselves a packed uh, planned event for you this evening. So sit tight, grab your popcorn. I'm excited to bring two hours of the program with you and continue baseball, you know, sports conversations here in Cincinnati. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, want to give you guys a big shout out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Be sure to have those notifications on. Don't miss a single episode uh, of the throw in each and every day during the week. If you guys are over on Facebook and or Twitter, be sure to hit that like button, share it with a friend, get on over into the comment sections on the YouTube channel. And you know, be a part of the chat. Love to hear you guys. Uh, also, if you guys are listening to us on any audio streaming platforms, we thank you. We welcome you. None of this is possible without everyone and their support. So we thank everyone and all the valid listeners. And uh, we're ready to have a great program. So I'm going to step aside, take a timeout uh, for the first time out of the program. Come on back, talk about those Cincinnati Reds. You guys are listening to The Throwing right here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Six twenty-two here on the th- on a Wednesday afternoon. You guys are listening to the throw in here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Want to give a big shout out to Streamyard Studios, the proud home of the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Create your podcasts, videos, host virtual business meetings, and even conduct interviews at Streamyard.com. All videos, all interviews, all game time play are streamed here, right here on StreamYard.com. That's how we're able to go live on all audio pl- platforms. I got my windows open. It's a little breezy out there, but it's really nice. And uh, unfortunately, what you're seeing is a big glare because the sun kind of comes down, down where my patio is. The sun kind of comes in and... I'm getting a lot of that sun already. Good thing it's not in my face. That's what I'm happy about. But, you know, yeah, I think I needed to go to a ball game yesterday because if if it wasn't for the ball game, the Bearcats and uh, the Cardinals yesterday, you know, I think it just helped me get into the season mode to be honest and in all honesty 
it gave me got me into the season mode and um I'm ready for baseball now. 162 days uh games in over 7 months. And don't forget the postseason. And it's going to you know if you're tired now just wait. There, there's a lot more still to come and, and you know you don't want to miss. You know, I was complexing about doing a program this afternoon. And I was telling myself, you don't want to miss any of these conversations. This is a huge week. This is what we build up for. If you wanted to miss, you would have missed last week. You could miss sometime next week. Um, and, you know, I know I have a doctor's appointment next Tuesday. There's a good possibility that I may be missing Tuesday's episode, depending on how I feel waking up in the morning, to be honest. And I, I got to drive. It's not a far drive. Say about a 25, maybe 30 minutes to get to the doctor's appointment. And that's to talk about the upcoming surgery. I'm kind of nervous about that, to be honest. Got a lot of great stuff going on next week. Um, but the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates, we're less than 24 hours away from this game to begin. And, you know, there's, there, there, you know, there's jitterbugs and there's, my stomach is twisting and turning, nodding up left and right. And it's, I'm not, I'm just a fan. And we got a lot to look into and a lot to catch up on. So let's take, you know, we over throughout the week. Last week, we also looked at the rest of the NL Central and how they looked at. I think it's time to take a look at our Cincinnati Reds. And here's that web. Here, here's that page. And I think it's a it's a fun page. All right. Um, all right, where do I begin? I'm gonna give you a lot more information about the starting pitchers tomorrow and about the moves and left and right. But let's begin talking about the Cincinnati Reds as they get ready to play the Pittsburgh Pirates in less than 24 hours. And I think the first thing we need to go do is jump over to the schedule. And share with you what we have on the screen. Okay. So let's get to the... So first of all, Red's home opener. Um, if you are in attendance, and unfortunately not, I'm not going to be. The you'll get the 2023 magnet schedule and car magnet to fans in attendance. Now, if you guys have any extra, please send them my way. I will love to monitor that. Um, set they will be off Friday and they'll have a game against the Pirates on Saturday, game two. There we go. Kids opening day. Be there to celebrate a special kid opening day featuring a pregame red carpet parade with Reds players and mascots. All right. Pretty nice. And then they have their Sunday promotion. It's a Reds calendar on Sunday against the Pirates at 140. Celebrate the 20th anniversary of Great American Ballpark by honoring many of ballpark's biggest moments to fans in attendance. And then after the three-game series, they'll go on and host the Chicago Cubs for three games before jumping on the road and giving the Phillies their first home opener of 2023, or their only home opener of 2023 in that sense. <laughs> they'll take on the Phillies in three games, then head on over to Atlanta before coming back home to Philadelphia and taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. They'll be on the road to Pittsburgh and then back home to Texas, followed by three games in Oakland. So there's a lot of traveling. And I think the first half of the month of April, you're going to, or pretty much, let me put it this way, the first this month stays on the East Coast. Now, I do know that the travel from Philadelphia to Atlanta is a little bit more pricey, um, a little longer, but then you get to come back home, face Philadelphia. And so I think here's the rule of thumb. Right, it's about winning the simple ball games that you need to win to help your season progress. And, and what I mean by that is, okay, is, is that we need to we need 
to sit here and have the Reds, I guess, what would you call it? They need to ha- take on the Pittsburgh Pirates and take care of business against the Pirates. I think uh, it's going to be a fun, rich history game. I agree. But kick getting off to the fr- a, a hot start in the first six games of the season, I think, especially against your own division, is necessary. And I don't want to find the Reds next this year the same position that they were in last year where they had a battle to avoid last place. Now, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I predicted or earlier this week that they could win 75-plus ball games, And I sure hope that the Reds could win 75 games. But optimistically, you got to win more than, se- I think, 70 or more, to be honest. And we have the team and we have the talent down there in the minor leagues that potentially are to be coming up at some point this year to do it. And you talk about Ellie Dela Cruz and Christian Encarnacion Strand, Mac McLean. You know, there, there are talent down there in the minors that are just waiting, you know, to, to fine tune them down in the minors, just waiting on their opportunity to come up to the big leagues. And, you know, there, there's, there's talk about, oh, are we steering away from the, the new look? No. But these are steps, I think, that are being taken during the course of the season over the next year or two. Because, you know, if we win with this ball club, great. If we lose, we're still on track for what we're trying to do and the process that the Reds are trying to plan, right? So, I mean, anything positive this year is just a bonus. We're talking about the next three years down the road. If the Reds don't hold up their water once they get rid of, or once they move on from, you know, Joey Votto, and once they move on from Will Myers, once they bring up guys like Christian Encarnacion, and Ellie De La Cruz, and they're still not winning, or they're not on the direction of winning, then that's when we can look back at the Reds and say, all right, you guys utterly failed, and there's something that within the system, whether it's David Bell, whether it's Nick Crawl, or even, I'm sorry to say this, but even if it's, you know, um, the ownership, the Castellinis, I think in three years' time frame, we could start looking at that option. As far as this season goes for the Red Legs, I honestly want to see them take two out of three against Pittsburgh. And yeah, maybe this is going to be a bold prediction. You got Hunter Green kinking things off tomorrow afternoon. On Saturday, you get Nick Lodolu and Graham Ashcraft, which, by the way, the congratulations to them. They're both going to be riding, be a part of the, the red carpet parade that takes place down there in Cincinnati that I'm going to avoid going down because I don't want to get stuck down there with traffic and whatnot. And ah, no, just, I'm just not doing it <laughs> uh, to say I'd rather stay home and get ready to call the game or whatnot. Um, but they should come into Monday, next Monday uh, against the Chicago Cubs and take, you know, be three and O honestly. And if not at best two and one, but three and I I'm going to put the standard three and O against the pirates. Kicking the things off strong. And you know what? You're going to carry that 3-0 and start over into Chicago where you can at least take two of three against the, the Cubbies, right? Before you head on the road, you want to at least be 5-1, and one, if not 4-2, and two, kind of giving yourself some pretty good feel heading into Philadelphia and to Atlanta where that thing, you know, where the East looks a little bit differently than what we're used to. And you're going to have to not only deal with them in on the road in six games, come back home and face the Philly. So you kind of get them out of the way a little bit, and that's exciting, right? Um, And then we got to take on Tampa Bay. I, and I don't know. I think, I think a good... Uh, here's the thing. You should always have your home games. You should always be above 500. And I think that's the goal that I think the Reds need to focus on and accomplish. And then you get Philadelphia, you know, come back, you know, on the road and then take on Atlanta, play about 500 baseball. And you, you want to take advantage of every series 
that you head into because Philadelphia, Atlanta, not no easy team to walk by. Heading back home to take on Philadelphia in a four game series as there is on April 15th, which is probably the first game that I would like to attend to of the season where they give given away a great American ballpark replica celebrating its 20th, 20th anniversary. I'm kind of excited to go back to there, uh, to that game. If I can first pitch is at, um, um, at a 410. And then you're home to Tampa Bay for a three game series. And then you're back on the road with Pittsburgh. And if you're not drained by Pittsburgh, because trust me, you'll be drained. You should hopefully take three or four in Pittsburgh, if not at least split the series. So I, I think it's important in the month of April to get things right. One, you got to finish month of April, at least 500 or better. And I, that's going to be my goal already kicking to the month of April here. All right, let's on a hop on over to the depth chart. Look at what the Reds are going to provide because there are going to be some injuries already given up here. And uh, we're going to look at Hunter Green, Nick Lodolu, Graham Ashcraft as our three core guys. Um, with Luke Weaver going to begin the season kind of on the IL, you'll get Luis Sessa and Connor Overton in that um, deal in the fourth and five spot. I, I think it's important to have Luis Sessa and uh, Luke Weaver get a lot of action. So hopefully Luke Weaver can come on back and have a, uh, as soon as possible, because that back end of the rotation, I think is going to hurt us the most. Hunter Green, Nick Lodolu, and Graham Ashcraft are going to be the three key guys. We've been talking about it since the end of last season that these are young group of guys. Not, I mean, they're not even, they're probably what? They're only like 23, 24 years old. They're all ready for the big leagues. And this is the first year where they don't really have any restrictions among, uh, you know, out of them, nor they don't have any like injuries lurking that we at least are aware of. And they don't have anyone holding them back from, for example, nothing, and no disrespect to, um, absolutely no disrespect to Luis Castillo, but we don't have to worry about um, anybody getting in the way. And these three guys are going to, you know, feed off each other and hopefully strive to be the better pitcher out there this season. So these are the three key guys that I'm sticking with. And for the first time heading into this season, because I know last year I didn't feel the same way. These three guys, I feel comfortable sending out there every five days and saying, all right, we have a chance at winning the ball game. Right. I mean, don't you feel maybe the same way in my opinion? So I'm thinking, all right, these three guys, let's go. Let's go. Luis Sessa, you know, it's unfortunate because of the injury of Luke Weaver, but I kind of wish that Luis Sessa gets some more time in the bullpen because I still feel like he fits that longevity spot. Connor Overton is going to get just the opportunity to get out there in the bullpen with Luke Weaver being gone. And you know what? I think he's given that extra life because once Luke Weaver is ready, the most likely Connor Overton is going to, you know, head on down to the minor leagues. Now, if Connor Overton could have two or three really good outings in the month of April, then you could very well see them stick with Connor Overton. And I think the Reds will much rather stick with him the best as possible. Over there in the bullpen, Alexis Diaz is your everyday closer. What I like about this is that, you know, we he's a young guy. We still don't know what he's capable of. He has vast mass of potential uh, in the bullpen. He just needs the time out there. And I think the Reds need to give him that opportunity to go out there and close games, you know, scenario games. But here's another good part, uh, problem to have. If you're the, you know, Reds, Alexa Diaz does not have to save each and every game that is presented itself. So, you know, there's a lot more that Diaz has to offer. He could go in there in the sixth, go there in the seventh, and even the eighth inning as scenario pitching, 
and then you could allow Lucas Sim or um, you know Buck Farmer or even you know Fernando Cruz kind of come in there and do some of the closing. So I really, really do like this year's bullpen, and, and I think the key issue is there's two parts to the success to the Reds uh, bullpen this year. One's going to be uh, staying healthy, right? And that's one thing that we last year just kept on experiencing was the healthiness uh, for the Reds. Um, and every time you see, you know, you got someone back, someone went down. Um, and second of all is to rely on these um, starting pitchers to go and give you two, you know, six, seven innings every night. So the workload of these, bull, you know, the bullpen guys are not as excessive, especially. And I'll leave it off as this, especially since you don't have a guy like, you know, an, a, a longevity pitcher back there in the bullpen that you can rely on to come in one, either every six days or come in, you know, in this, you know, fourth or fifth inning when you need him to eat up some innings for you. So just on this pitching alone, there's a lot of options, a lot of excitement. Uh, Going to cut to a break. And when we come on back, I want to finish the the roster that the Reds have talk about some of the options and what we have to look at on the field and offensively. So don't go nowhere. Stick around. The throwing continues here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. All righty, 644, bottom of the hour here on the throw and take you guys up until 8 o'clock before AEW Dynamite, which is going to be tonight. And uh, like I said, we we're talking about the Cincinnati Reds and they're, they are less than 24 hours away from opening day. And you got to feel the excitement in the room. That's the only way this is all going to work. All righty. So we, before the break, we talked about the pitchers. We talked about the uh, bullpen and that starting ro rotation. Now we got to move to the catchers and what the catchers are going to bring to the table as you know, I there's a strong belief, and I strongly believe this, that you have to have uh, a good relationship between your catchers and your pitchers. No doubt about it. If you don't have that relationship, that strong relationship, doing the catch and mind and play, then you're just out of sync, and I think it's difficult to pitch in games. And this year, we're going to see Tyler Stevenson, Kirk Casale, and Luke Molly join the catching position. Now, Tyler Stevenson is maintain his role is to kind of transition this year into a first baseman. As we will see Joey Votto begin his season on the IL. And so let me talk about that for a second because... You know, he's made it clear. We said we read that we read the article. He's like, listen, if if I'm I'm not gonna rush back. I, I know my time's limited. And if I can't perform at the you know pace that you guys want me to perform at, if I can't hit my weight and, and produce the way that you need me to produce for this team, then it's time to hit, call it quits. And I would like to see Joey Votto at least finish off this year strong. But by the way he's doing it, I will be honest with you, he's doing it the right way, and I really uh, applaud him for it. He's not rushing to get back. He got to a very late uh, start in spring training. He's going to begin the season on rehab down there in the minor leagues, and I think this is appropriate because while he's gone, he's we're going to go ahead and see guys like Will Meyer step in and Tyler Stevenson fill in, and I'm sure when Votto is back and he says that he's ready to go, we will see him at you know in, in a bounce back year. At least that's what I would like to see out of Joey Votto, a long time Reds, you know, first baseman. Hopefully he retires as a Red. And, you know, 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there on a limb and say, okay, I would like him to retire at the end of this year, especially if this year is not no you know batting 400, and I think that's excessive. But he had one of the worst offensive years last year, especially since his sh- you know shoulder injury. So I would like to see, uh, you know, so we're gonna see a lot more from Tyler Stevenson. We already know, and the reason why the Reds are carrying three catchers is because you're gonna see Kurt Casale. And Luke Molly uh, do more of the catching roles while Tyler Stevenson, he's going to be transitioned as a designated hitter as well as a first baseman, uh, utilize, going back and forth between him and Will Myers. And I think the key, um, you know, key, the key element of Tyler Stevenson is to get him as many games on the field offensively as possible. If that means you got to have him as a designated hitter five days a week, if that means he has to be at first base, you know, Catching, it puts a lot of toll and really strains the body, um, you know, when you're out there each and every night squatting in that position, having to jump up. And I'm not saying that Tyler Stevenson can't, you know, fill in that role, but he scared a lot of Reds fans last year when he got hurt. And I think that, you know, one of the goals this year over already heard by Nick Kroll and David Bell is keeping Tyler Stevenson healthy. We're going to move around the rest of the infield because we got Jonathan India firmly at second base, followed by Spencer Steer at third base and Jose Barrero at shortstop. Uh, Two guys that I really locked in and see, Jonathan India and Spencer Steer. When it comes down to India, he's taken that, he understands his role a lot better this year than he did last year, taking that leadoff spot, trying to kind of almost, I would say, build a team around Jonathan India. And then you build your, you know, the rest of the team around the three starting pitchers we pitchers we have. Uh Spencer Steer is gonna get his fair chance. This is it, right? You're up at the big leagues. Let's see what you're capable of doing. Uh and, and a lot of people are, are going out there saying that Spencer Steer is gonna have a phenomenal year and probably lead with home runs and hits out of the Reds. And I would love to see that from Spencer Steer because right now. We really don't have anyone at third base that's ready to be brought up. I mean, you have Jason Volser, of course. You got Matt Reynolds down there in the minor leagues, I believe, which are great. Um, But, I mean, you don't really have much more help because that shortstop position right now, Kevin Newman, and and Kevin Newman is just that backup to Jose Pereiro. You know, he... Jose is going to get a little bit of time, and I want him to get comfortable at shortstop, maybe take him about two to three weeks, to get comfortable there at shortstop. But the reason you're going to give him a little bit more time because you have uh, Ellie De La Cruz injured. You got a uh, uh, Christian Encarnacion injured. And Mac McLean is, is going to start off in the minors. But, you know, if we don't see Jose Barrero pick up and find his role by June or July, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the, the, the position change to Kevin Newman until we could bring up one of these younger guys. Kevin New, you know, one thing I, I would point out with Kevin Newman, I would love to see Kevin Newman uh, at some point this year, uh, this weekend, against going up against um, the Pittsburgh Pirates, especially in a game time situation. See how that that trade uh, worked out. All right, out there in the outfield, we got Jake Fraley out there in left field with injuries behind him. He's looking to have probably a monstrous year. Um, TJ Friedel, Will Benson's excited. I think the Reds are excited to have Will Benson as most likely he'll start off the season out there in center center field because of Nick Senzel slowly coming back. Um, Will Myers out there at right uh, right field, but it's going to be interesting to see how the Reds shipped and shave um, shape uh, the outfield right now because. Will Myers is going to have to come down and play a lot of first base early on in the season. Although we have Tyler Stevenson that looks fine and dandy, Will Myers is more prepped for first base than Tyler Stevenson. So you may see Tyler Stevenson two, three days maybe during the week, the rest of the time Will Myers, and then you'll see uh, Tyler Stevenson hit to the DH, maybe do a catching in the in the middle of all that. So Jake Fraley, TJ Friedel, and Will Benson right now is going to be a strong suit. Now, well, I know when Nick Senzel, he's you know he's going to get come back and he's going to fight to come back harder and stronger. And when he comes back 
a there's limited unlimited options that the Reds could throw out there in the outfield. But right now, I wouldn't be surprised when we look at that lineup tomorrow. Jake Fraley, TJ Friedel, and Will Benson are all playing the outfield right now uh, in those uh, position spots. Overall, there's some promise, promising aspects. You know, Will Myers is hoping to, to revive his, uh, you know, droughtful career in San Diego. Nick Cizel, once he gets healthy, you're looking, uh, looking promising, as well as Jake Fraley, you know, looking to bounce back from an injury out there in Seattle. Uh, Will Benson's looking to make a name for himself. Then there's really not much, a whole lot of outfielders down there in the minors. You got what, Nick Solak and, um, Stuart Fairchild, but I think the outfield is pretty solid. Um, I would like Jose Barrero to find his uh, his feet. If not, Kevin New Newman will be also in that uh, first change. Um, I know it's only not even opening day yet, and that's tomorrow, but guys that we are maybe looking to also be ready, willing to put up on the trade market at the beginning of the year, Nick Senzel, Will Myers is obviously it, it for me is one of them. A Will Benson, if he has a good first half of the season, Kevin Newman, same thing. Maybe tossing him on that trade market, see what you could get for him. Um, you know, they got rid of Austin Roman. I don't think they're going to do anything with the catching, um, neither with the pitching, to be honest. Um, so really just position-wise. But, man, I'm excited for the Cincinnati Reds season. Tomorrow, it's all about the Reds, honestly. There, there's really not much more to talk about when it comes down, you know, we, we got to get ready for open today, right? Tomorrow is all about Cincinnati. We'll make it Friday about the recap of opening day, as well as WrestleMania season, because that's our number two. Um, Nick crawl had a couple of Q and A's. I'm actually going to push that back to tomorrow. And that's the first thing we're going to talk about is the Q and A's that he had uh, coming up next top of the hour. The NFL has approved of some new rule changes. I want to start talking a little bit about that. And then in hour number two, we're going to talk about 10 wrestlers who could debut or return after WrestleMania. And um, I think on top of that, let's talk about some four matches. And here are the four matches that I'm intrigued in talking about, to be honest. All right, um, the four matches, yesterday we did a lot of non-title matches, and I think today is it's going to be a little bit different because I want to talk about some title matches. So the matches that I have uh, that we're going to be talking about this evening is the United States title, Austin Theory taking on John Cena, the Intercontinental title, Gunther versus Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre, the Raw Women's child, uh, title, Bianca Belair taking on um, Asuka, and then the SmackDown Women's Championship, Rhea Ripley taking on um, Charlotte Flair, the 2003 Warrior Rumble winner. And so I have my few takes on that, but we got to step aside. Our number one is complete in the books. Our number two is coming up, and we got a lot more to talk about. Thank you guys for tuning into the third one here on the TNC YouTube channel.
Alrighty, Wednesday afternoon, got some college baseball on in the back. Let's get our heads right here and finish off the program in the last hour. Hey, listen, when we get caught up in conversations and when we get caught up in some of the things that we want to talk about, and sometimes these segments can get away, but I think it's important to keep these segments going and not really spend, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes because I I have the tendency of um, just going on and saying the same thing in 20 different ways. So, um, yeah, best not to, to be honest. But talk to Cincinnati Reds tomorrow. Want to give you a opinion about predictions, where we think every team places. We'll talk about the starting pitching for each and every game. And I'm excited. I'm thrilled. Uh, we're going to get to it. And hopefully, um, if I could get the Reds on TV, because they're supposed to be on the local WLW um, tomorrow afternoon following the the parade that's going to be televised, that I'm actually going to tune in and actually watch or try to watch at least. I mean... I'm excited. I have to go grab some monsters and grab some energy drinks. It's going to be a long day for me. Trust me. But it's still on the back burner because we aren't officially aware if it or confirmed if the if the game is going to be on TV. Like I said, sometimes blackouts happen because even though we get the local channels, it's only shown actual locally. Um, and Hulu doesn't provide that. For example, during the winter time, you know, they have like the Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and How the Grinch Stole Christmas type stuff. Those are given to um those are blacked out. So I I mean I try recording them and they're on WLW or the Fox 19, and then they're blacked out because they don't Hulu does not provide that so we'll see what happens um tomorrow a couple of other things that we do want to talk about before getting into this segment here has to be um love's not enough now we talked a lot about love's not enough and to be honest i'm excited i'm thrilled um from what Love's Not Enough has been able to provide. So Love's Not Enough is a theater play presented by Enlightened Studios, written and directed by Terry Chappell II, originated back in 2019, revamped earlier this year. A display went on back in the end of January, and we got the chance to interview a handful of guests. Now, uh, between that time, Terry came back to me and said, hey, listen, it was such a success that we're going to do it again April 7th, at 7 p.m. and April 8th at 3 p.m. next weekend at the Community Arts Center in, in Fairfield, Ohio. Yes, it's Easter weekend. So if you guys got any plans, you guys are in town and you want to go see a uh, a theater play, uh, I know me and, and the wife is headed out there next weekend uh, because we were invited to go do a live uh, program from the Community Arts Center just within the two hours before it starts. So to, uh, next Friday, April 7th, we will be there from 5 to 7. We'll also get a chance to watch the play. Thank you to Terry and Enlightened Studios for providing us tickets. But then we're also going to be able to do a after, kind of like an after show, where we come back on after the, after the play and uh, get the reaction from the audience. So I'm actually very excited. I want to say thank you to Terry and the entire cast and team of Enlightened Studios. They've been a wonderful guest on our show. Uh, open arms, welcoming, and, you know, I know interviews haven't really turned out the way that we really want it to be, 
but uh, we're going to get a lot of guests coming on our program next Friday afternoon. So if you have nothing to do, come on by, check us out, say hi to us and, and all that fun stuff because, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a blast to, to go out there. So Love's Not Enough uh, presented by Enlightened Studios next uh, next weekend. Big event after uh, heading it out there to Community Arts Center. Tickets are still available, by the way. All right. So um, another announcement i've been i guess procrastinating talking about on the program um and you know i was waiting around to talk about this because um one for respect of the wife I wanted her to feel comfortable and ready to post this and talk about this and all that fun stuff. But we are expecting a child. <laughs> um, yeah. So me and the wife's been together for about a year coming up in April. And, um, you know, I could sit here and talk blue to my face about our relationship it's definitely there's been ups and downs and i think definitely struggles that in comparisons a lot of other relationships haven't endured you know or they would have endured over the next six you know over like a time frame and we've done it in a year um you know i got two kids already um and you know they're you know ones you know and they they're they're the the life of the party and uh you know, we uh, are expecting uh, another, you know, at least I'm expecting another. This will be her first. And things have been, you know, all over the place. You know, she, you know, the wife's been a very big supporter of what I do and this show and this program. She's encouraged me, stand by me, although, hey, you know what, sometimes this program takes a little bit more of a priority than spending time with her and spending time in their relationship and build a relationship. So, you know, in all honesty, um, you know, and she, she's tolerated it. She, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, fightful when it comes down to, Hey, I got to get this stuff done for this program. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta, I wake up early every morning, six, seven, eight o'clock, the latest saying, all right, I got to put two, three, four hours of work into the program in the morning. Just be, just to do what I want to do. Um, you know, and then it's afterwards, as soon as this hits, I'm right back at it, trying to get ready for the next day, try to get ready for the next week, what we want to talk about. And sometimes it, you know, drives me late at night. She goes, you know, and so she's very, a, she's a huge supporter and I can't thank her enough for the support and the assistance that she provides me, even though she doesn't provide anything physically for the program. There's a lot of mental stuff that she helps provide me with. She tells me to stick with it on the days that I don't really quite feel the need or energy to do. And I think it's important that I stick with it, do it on a daily basis like I want to. Because and then we don't miss any news. We don't miss any coverage. We got to do things like have guests on our show and whatnot. So, um, you know, and it, I, I, all I could say is that these the first month, you know, you hear the worst that the first month is the worst when it comes out of pregnancy. First month, you know, first trimester is just terrible. You got the case of the morning sickness. You got the cramps, you know, you got the potential percentage of miscarrying and, uh, you know, God forbid that, uh, that does not, please do not allow that to happen this time. And we, we really do our best to do what we need to do. Um, and we take care of ourselves. We, she takes care of herself, which is important. So, um, thought just to share it. She shared it on uh, social media the other day and, uh, thought just to share it out with you guys, uh, on the program as well. And so, Hey, expected at some point, if, and you know, when I have my back surgery, I'm going to obviously have time off. And when she's giving birth, I'm going to take time off from the program. So. I just hope it's not during anything that um, anything crucial. Um, I do know it's going to be during the playoffs because she's expected midway through October. So I guess we'll see 
where that comes. So that's the second big announcement. But all right, let's get down into some of the conversations that we need to have. NFL is having some new rule changes. There is quite a handful of them, but these ones are primarily on the um these are primarily on the on-field changes that the that the NFL is going to have this year. So, um coming up first here is amended to rule number 5, section 1. I'm not going to get into it. This was pro- uh, proposed by the Philadelphia Eagles. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I don't know the exact rule, but this is what this change is to apply. Players can use the number jersey number zero now. Kickers and pun- punters um, can use any jersey numbers between zero and 49 and 90 to 99. Not really a big, uh, big news, but it's uh, it's a change nonetheless. All right, uh, coming in here for the presented proposed by the Los Angeles Chargers, referees will adjust play clock following any instant replay reversal in the same way they do the following other stoppages. Before players would have a signal back to have to signal back to the officials to request more time on the play clock in such situations, and, and you know why I, I think. In a instant replay reversal, yeah, I mean, I do because you know, the thing is that clock should stop, and I don't know, maybe it should be reduced, other than you know, maybe down to 20 seconds. I don't because they, you know, you're giving the offense time to rethink their play, and it's almost like an uncharged timeout if you think about it. So, but I do like this new rule change, and hopefully. I mean, these are probably minor changes that you're not necessarily going to see on the field directly other than maybe the overall aspect of the game. Proposed by the Houston Texans, the replay uh, official can automatically review a close play on a failed fourth down attempt. This will save teams challenges if it's close call on fourth down. The rule change may speed up the game since the replay official can review the play immediately. Yeah, so normally, you know, the the team is one who would have to, you know, issue the challenge Will they get a chance to save the challenge. And it's only on failed fourth downs. And it, I think it's under the discretion of the replay official. And, uh, and I'm sure between plays, between turnovers, they're going to get a chance to take a look at this more closely. All right, another rule change given to you, uh, thanks to the proposed by the competition committee, a launch, which is a personal foul and 15-yard penalty, is now if a player leaves one or both feet to make a tackle. So... If someone is lunging themselves or trying to dive to make a tackle and they leave one foot off the ground or they leap both feet off the ground, that is now also a personal foul, which is penalized by 15 yards. It's going to, um, I'm, I'm okay with that play uh, with that rule change. Another competition committee, uh, rule change. If a player is called for tripping, the penalty result in a 15-yard and an automatic first down. Uh, not really too much into that one, but that's part of the rule change on the field. Um, this will penalize teams handling off. Okay, so the rule change for this one is penalizing teams handling off the football football forward on a, a read option, for example, or any other running plays uh, uh, play a p- penalty. Hands off will have to made have to be made next to or behind the quarterback, not in the front. So what we're talking about here is read option plays. Sometimes the quarterback waits until the very last second to hand it off or to make the pass. And there sometimes this leads into the first or you know, being, you know, the runner being in front. Well, in this case, is gonna have to, he's gonna have to stay backwards, you know, on next to him. 
it's going to also, I think, be interesting if, depending how the officials, you know, officiate, are they going to be lenient on these plays? Or are they going to be really strict on these plays? This one here is proposed by the competition committee. This makes uh, those act. They make this will make those act counts uh, for a loss of downs at the spot of the foul, just like an illegal forward pass. All right, so related back to this one, handing the football forward is both the same thing. I just had two PowerPoints. Um, this would also result in a penalty, and it would be just treated like a illegal forward pass, and it's going to be loss of a down. Uh, there you go. All right. The to make a penalty for illegal punts, drop kicks, or place kicks the same as illegal forward pass. This is also going to be treated the same. Removes of the words the butt, ram, and spear from Article 8 and adds those actions into a penalty for impermissible use of a helmet as well. Alrighty, to prevent the offense from benefiting with an extra play at the end of a half because of the offensive penalty proposed by the com competition committee. An example was given if the of offense commits a holding penalty at the end of the half to end the half, they will no longer lead to an untimed additional down. So... And I think this one hasn't really changed too much. Um, I guess this is, okay, it's in the end of the half. I thought this play was already, this rule was already in place. Because the only way you can get an extra down on a penalty at the end of a half or the end of a game is if um, the defense made it. All righty. To clearly use of a helmet against an opponent pro proposed by the competition committee. Remove, um, see, this is what, all right, the, uh, this, all right, that's, that's the one going back here, right? Uh, the act, um, removes, uh, the, the article eight adds on the additional into the penalty of impermissible use of helmet. I got these two mixed up, but I apologize. Um, so yeah. The, to clarify the use, they wanted to clarify the use of a helmet against an opponent. So if you're going for a spear, you're going for a headbutting. If you're going for a ram, uh, it is, is considered impermissible use of a helmet, um, which then, therefore, there is a personal, a personal foul or penalty against it because of concussions and whatnot. I like the clarity of that. That makes sense. Last but not least, to clarify the use of a helmet against, okay, the so number 12 is just the same thing. And I just, I was fixing it up. I got sidetracked and lost it. So, these are all great things done on the field. And I don't know necessarily if this is something that we will see a difference of. And like I mentioned to you, this has to be something that the officiating has to take heavily too. So we'll cover the rest of the news. I have it somewhere. I'll put PowerPoints together and display the rest. All right. Coming up next, 10 wrestlers who could be making their debut or returning back to the WWE after WrestleMania. That's still to come. Plus, talking about the four matches that we have Coming up next, uh, take you guys up until 8 o'clock tonight on a Wednesday. You guys are listening to The Throw One on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. All right, 723 on the program. Welcome back to the throwing here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. 
And it is WrestleMania season. We are two days away from the final episode of SmackDown before WrestleMania. We are also two days away from the WWE Hall of Fame, which um, I just saw on Facebook. Um, I believe it was what Tim White. Um, the final inductee into this year's class of Hall of Fame. There we go. Will be a referee, Tim White, which I don't quite know too much about him. All I know, he's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. And this is the first time I think I've seen a um, referee get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, so. Hmm. All right. We'll talk a lot more about that tomorrow. And I think it's, it's going to turn out to be a nice induction class. Well, let me tell you this. It's three days away from night one of WrestleMania. And stories that we talk about this. And I heard this on another podcast last night. And I think it's true. For all wrestling content providers, when it comes down to WWE, when it comes down to WrestleMania, this is the week. This is the week for you guys to all come out here and get as much contact and much exposure. Now, I do things a little differently. This is just me. This is how I do my business. Uh, but, you know, yeah, everywhere you're seeing, every t- everywhere you talk about the uh, WrestleMania, this is the week to really cover it. And, you know, as much as I could give you thoughts and opinions about WrestleMania, I think it's also important to have these open conversations about the possible returns, the possible call-ups. And over the, you know, it's usually a WWE tradition that the night after WrestleMania, um, and in this case, sometimes even at the SmackDown after WrestleMania, you will see a call-up or you will see uh, a return. And there's a couple favorable returns uh, that is in mind. So I have a top 10 list here of surprise and returns back to the WWE. Um, and we're going to start off with number 10, Matt Cardona. And, you know, I think, you know, some of these top 10 predictions may be a little bit far fetched. I'd be honest with you. But the whole aspect is that these are ideas. And where Matt Cardona right now is, and, you know, within the independent, you know, um, squads this is more unrealistic but we could see a mark condor and he's he's one of the handful of guys who have left wwe build their names 10 times better and you know deserves to come back uh to the wwe and get a chance to revive that so matt cardona um you know <sighs> You know, listen, fans want the new form of Cordona since taking the independent by stream. Chelsea Green's also in the WWE. This would be a nice pose if Cordona could make it back to the WWE at some point this year. All right, coming in at number nine, we talked about it. Braun Strowman, uh, Braun Breaker, excuse me. Uh, Another guy who's favored to get called up, make his WWE debut. And I think it's all going to depend on what happens. Um, You know, I know there's conversations about, you know, I've heard conversations about what to happen at WrestleMania. Could we see Braun Breaker be a WrestleMania breakthrough? I just, I guess my only thing about that is that we may not get the crowd reaction that we want. So we'll, I, I, I guess we'll see. Coming in at number eight is Big E. We haven't heard from him since he broke his neck nearly a year ago, which put him out of WrestleMania. I don't want to rush anything um, with injuries, especially when it comes down to injuries. So Big E, if he's ready, then let him come back. But you also don't see the New Day as part of WrestleMania this year. And that's I think that's unfortunate. And they're... Four, I don't see the need to bring back Big E unless you're taking him away from the New Day. 
Coming in at number seven on my list is Mandy Rose. Um, you know, listen, did the WWE make a mistake by firing Mandy Rose? I understand that there were circumstances and things that they had to follow. And I respect that, you know, it's hard to make a decision off of a really up and coming top star who had the it factor on NXT. And we could potentially see roll over to the main roster once again. Um, But I'm sure, you know, WWE is also capable of negotiating and talking about things and fixing things compared to just walking away from them. And I think they lost a huge, a huge talent in Mandy Rose when they fired her. So I will, I mean, things are still up in the air. Things I think are also on good terms. So, you know, she talks highly about WWE. So I don't think it's a, it's a pot. I don't, I mean, it's not a out of the range question on why you can't bring back Mandy Rose. Uh, Tommaso Champa comes in at number six. Um, He's been out since uh, last August with injuries, and uh, you know I, I don't know where he would fit along the line. Maybe something with the IC range, but he he is he is somebody that uh, that I think you know should return. Um, uh, you know he's just he's on the he's on that list at number six, coming in at number five, Naomi. Um, you know, listen, she dealt with her suspension. She's done uh, surgery on her shoulder. Is she ready to return? I would like to see her return. Um, and she adds a flair to the women's division, to be honest. She is a incredible competitor when she is healthy and she's out there. And I think she plays a big factor. And she could be good. She could be a good match card up against a, guy, a woman like Rhea Ripley or even an Oscar down the near future. Coming in at number four, this is kind of a bold prediction here, but Sanity, as uh, Nikki's kind of recently made some um, um, remarks about seeing uh, Sanity back again, I thought Nikki Cross and Sanity was a great fraction. They were not utilized. Uh, they were kind of utilized like retribution, and they there was a lot of things going on. As we may see the a time away from the bloodline. This is another good fraction coming up that can, can play, can play uh, dividends to the tag team division or just even to a roster coming in at number three. This is going to be much related to um, big E and that's going to be Randy Orton, you know, injuries, you know, I, I, I don't know the status, of Randy Orton. I know he had to get back surgery. I know that didn't quite go as well as planned, but to see Randy Orton come back, you know, I think it'd be more on a limited limited basis. And I'm a, I'm a big, I, mean, I want to see him now. Is he, you know, is, is this the time, you know, as out of all the returns out of the, you know, comebacks and whatnot. And really what role does Randy Orton face? Um, I was listening to a podcast last night and they said one of the biggest concerns coming back from injury is if he could hit that RKO because that defines Randy Orton and his character. But he could be a guy who comes back. I mean, he's been talked about being lingering around you know, the backstage area that he's going to be there. Cameron Grimes comes in at number two on my list. And Cameron Grimes is one of those guys who we haven't seen in a while. And I've talked a lot about him yesterday on um, the top 10 call-ups. He's been absent. He's kind of re-looked at to a more physical fatigue. And he's really a guy that I would like to see him come up. He could join Judgment Day. He could do all sorts of of things and you know he kind of did it all back when he was before nxt 2.0 kind of been written off camera and they don't w, nxt doesn't really have any plans for him so why not Cameron grimes comes in at number two and coming in at number one you guys has to be jay white now i think it only makes sense to come out and i heard the perfect scenario and i and i have to agree with uh, the podcasting that I, and I don't know the name of it, but they do an incredible job there. They're really big, uh, well-known 
on on social media, Twitch, uh, TikTok. Also, you see the shorts all the time. Um, and uh, they're saying that the, there's only really one good um, kind of one of the good things that you could see out of this in Jay White coming to the WWE. You know, obviously, there's been a lot of talk, but I'm also seeing one good storyline that comes in, and that's John Cena winning night one of WrestleMania and then has an open challenge match on Monday Night Raw, and then Jay White makes his entrance and makes his in-ring debut at the WWE. You know, he's one of the biggest independent names out there available right now. And we haven't heard too much about it. You know, he's allegedly a free agent. He's a, he was one of the biggest new Japan pro wrestling wrestlers of last year. And it, it, what type of reaction could we get from the wrestling universe? If we could see a guy like Jay white be a WWE superstar. And I think it would have to do a lot from Cody Rhodes coming over. And this would honestly start the one big, you know, trend of people coming over to the WWE. Before break, I want to talk to you about one thing that I heard. I think it just automatically makes sense. And um, it was just kind of in a, in a quick, like, short video that I heard about this. And it was like, AEW has matches. You throw two and two together, you discover a dream match, and you're like, all right, go out there and compete. They got storylines, but their main focus is on throwing out there and having matches and wrestling and occupying a wrestling show to primarily wrestling. WWE focuses itself on the story and stories, and the fans come to not just see matches, but to also see how stories develop and where it takes shape and format. And, you know, that's why I feel when it comes down to trying to talk about AEW and to talk about WWE, there's just, obviously there's a lack. And for a wrestling fan that is used to the WWE growing up, there's always been a element of storytelling that has been, that, that has kind of been a, a, a staple to understanding um, how a wrestling, because if you could tell the match, if you could tell the story in the ring and then have, you know, the shows, I, I think it's just, it's a world of win. So that was just something I thought was interesting to throw out there. All right, coming up next, final segment of the day, we sit here and we talk about more WrestleMania matches. I got the four, got the two uh, undercards to the W, uh, to the you undisputed WWE Universal Championship. That's the IC title and the US title. And I got both Raw and SmackDown to talk about here. Coming up next, you guys are listening to the throwing here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Alrighty, welcome back here to the program. I want to give a big shout out to the friends at Epidemic Sound. Discover your world class artists, composers, and bands. Find the perfect soundtrack and give your social media accounts the music they deserve. Epidemic Sound is a royalty free music link. For more information, check out epidemicsound.com. Alrighty, let's talk about WrestleMania. More matches still to come. Right after this quick promotional ad. Like a failure, like no one can. Where is your heart? What does it look like? Bruised, damaged or mistreated. Where is your heart? What does it look like? What do you do with the feelings you feel? All 
already. Love's Not Enough, presented by Enlightened Studios. You guys can catch the, catch the play at the Community Arts Center uh, next Friday and Saturday. Two performances only. Uh, Friday, we will be down there live talking to guests, audience members, vendors, you name it, 5 to a 7. Head on down there. Check us out. Check out the play while you're at it. We'll be there live before the per play and live after the play. Uh, I love that enough. Thanks to Terry and uh, Enlightened Studios. Um, that play starts at 7 p.m. Get your tickets. $20 for Stadium, $25 for Matinee. And at one more time at 3 p.m. on Saturday, the day before Easter, check them out. Get your tickets today at the Community Arts Center's website in Fairfield, Ohio. All right, it is WrestleMania season, and yesterday we got a chance to talk about a handful of matches. And today we'll get a chance to talk about some more matches. So let's get to the first match that we want to disclose and talk about. Um, let me get to it. All right, I guess the first one we're going to go after is going to be Austin Theory and John Cena that's going to kick off WrestleMania night one, first match. And I think, you know, listen, I think this is a great way to do it. Um, you know, Austin Theory, let me just talk about this. Austin Theory has been put into quite a predicament coming into WrestleMania. You know, someone had to give him the opportunity. And, and, and likely, you know, a lot of people are comparing Austin Theory to John Cena and his career. And I, I get that. I, I really do. Especially over what's everything that's happened in the last six months. But Vince McMahon saw something in Austin Theory, took a chance on Austin Theory, and been like, hey, listen. I know he is not ready yet, but we're going to throw him out there and shape him as he goes. And that kind of holds an athlete back. I mean, we've seen it through Dominic, and even though a lot of people are saying he's ready, I, I still feel like he's not there yet. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. But Austin Theory had to really step up in a time slot. In a, in a time area that, yeah, it's great for a competitor to get the opportunity, but it takes a athlete a while to get in. And for the first good amount, you're treating him as a heel, and, you know, he had to get his feet wet. And then Triple H takes him over, takes over, and then he kind of goes down. He, he's, you know, try, you know, they're throwing... Bobby at him to throw on Seth at him and, and trying everything they can to keep him relevant. And now John Cena's back. And we see John Cena in theory. Now, th this is the only reason why the match works. And I think Austin Theory is getting bigger, bigger and better. And I do feel like he's growing. I guess my question to you guys is that. Is it John Cena? Is it Austin Theory or Dominic? Who's getting over more? And so maybe it's time for Theory to drop the title. Come on, take a step back or take a few steps back and work on some fine tuning in his character. I like the character. Don't get don't get rid of the character. I say just get just tune it up a little bit. But here's one of my problems with this character or with this I guess match is that John Cena is a part timer and if he's going to go in to Wrestlemania and beat Austin Theory then I don't see him making a title run at the United States Championship level so what the, the, the thought is right now I've heard of multiple sources just Throwing out the idea that theory that Cena opened up a ch open challenge on Raw and Jay White defeats him. I mean, and I think that's a Monday Night Raw, you know, not main event, but Monday I, hell main event. Go on and do that. But Monday Night Raw dream match: Jay White versus John Cena. What about that? What about that? But overall, I think this really does elevate Theory's career. It elevates what he's capable of doing in and out of that ring. 
I expect Theory to help carry John Cena. And I think this really puts Theory in a different situation because he was Vince McMahon's boy a year ago and he got thrown into with Pat McAfee. Now, you know, I think he's held himself pretty well, but then now it's time for him to grow up. And this is the year, this is the WrestleMania match that I think should help him grow up in the aspect. All right. I'm going to get back to the Intercontinental Championship match and save that for the very, very end. And I am going to go with, um, bring you to Asuka and Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you and be blunt that I think this is going to be a better match than the Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. I just think the intensity of this match and the way that Asuka's come back in this kind of like this kid, you know, almost I'm scared of Asuka, you know, as a fan. You know, I'm scared of um, going toe-to-toe. And I, and I think Bianca's a little intimidated by what craziness Asuka brings to the table. So, in my opinion, I think this is a better WrestleMania match between the two women's titles that will be defended this weekend. Um, and no matter where this t- match fits, I think maybe elevates the match and be hard to beat. Um, so I would like to maybe see this match night two kicking things off to set the standard of what night two has to come down. All right, we're going to move on to Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, the winner of the 2023 women's uh, Royal Rumble. And I, you know, we're talking honesty here and opinions and Rhea Ripley is someone I think deserves the title spot. As a matter of fact, I think it's been over a year, you know, in this new image of hers that I think she deserves to have this title. And I, th- there's a good chance that that's going to happen at WrestleMania. But what I think, you know, I've said this before on the program, and my take on this is it's a little disappointing. I just mentioned here a few minutes ago that Asuka and Bianca Belair, in my opinion, is going to be a better WrestleMania match. And, you know, I've seen these two females fight. And I think one of the reasons why we're going to see this again is because I think the clock is ticking. Because everyone remembers the feud between Rhea and Bianca. And so you keep that feud separate as long as possible so that you're capable of reuniting that at some point down the road. I'd say within the next year or two, to be honest. But when it comes down to the Charlotte and Rhea, you really got to know the NXT history. You still got to know the WrestleMania a few years ago. And I get it. I know it. And I think that these two we- uh, females can be a main event. Now, Last year, we saw Ronda Rousey won the Women's Royal and Charlotte main event one of the nights at WrestleMania. And I think that was the injustice. So do I think that they should wrestle main event at WrestleMania? I do because of that very exact reasons. But I also think that this is not even a WrestleMania main event match, which I think is a little disappointing if you think about it. I think that this is a main event at a premium alive elsewhere, maybe even backlash, but not at WrestleMania. You know what could be a main event? And I got to sneeze. Hopefully I don't sneeze, you know, here. A main event that could be, uh, you know, a match that could be a main event as well, and we argued, is this triple threat match between Gunther, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I was trying to think about the way to describe this match, and it took me to listening to other podcasts to come up with the idea that this is going to be a old classic 
match, fight, fighting match. Now, this is going to be the definition of professional wrestling at its finest. You know, the way it was back in the 60s, 70s, 40s, maybe. You know, back when they did this, you know, on the road with the circus in the sense. These are not one, not two, but three men who go on and just going to annihilate, annihilate each other. And you got one prize. You got the IC title, which is probably, in my opinion, one of today's relevant, most prestigious championships ever. I'm sorry, but even the undisputed WWE Universal Championship is does not even touch nowhere to near on how big this title means and this match is going to relay. You got the Fighting Irish, you got Gunther, and you got Drew McIntyre. And I'm just, I'm actually excited. And I, you know, we'll call this now, I think it's going to be, this is also a match that could technically main event, probably should main event. I would hate going on after this match. I, you know, if, I would hate the, the, the match after this because, it's, you know, you're gonna, it's going to suck so much energy out of the w, you know, WWE universe that the match after this is not going to be able to top it. I'm a little bit disappointed in the buildup for this match. Now, I'm not blaming Sheamus, and I'm not blaming Drew McIntyre, and I was really favoring Gunther up until he started whining and crying and throwing in a hissy fit to Adam Pierce, And then he decides that, I guess, both of them are not good enough to face him at WrestleMania, and Imperium decides to ambush and attack. And then Gunther goes back on and say, you know, they, they both didn't win. They, they both don't deserve to be at WrestleMania facing me. And I think Gunther should have been... I respect Gunther. I respect all three men that's going to be in the ring this weekend fighting for that Intercontinental Championship. But I kind of lost a little bit of um, mutual respect for Gunther in the sense of if I was Gunther, I would have embraced this match to its finest, to its fullest, saying, hey, I'm a competitor. I can take both of them on. They can't decide, you know, they can't decide a victory. Let me go ahead and take on both of them anyways. And, and because we we saw that after the math, and I'm just, eh, right? In my opinion. But this match has the credibility of being main event night one. And so now there's two options that we could go down. And I think it's going to come down to WrestleMania night one to, all right, when are we going to have this match? As a matter of fact, if we don't, so, you know, we see John Cena, Austin Theory, night one. We see, I mean, maybe Bianca and Asuka, Austin Theory, John Cena, night one. Bianca and Asuka, night two, to kick off WrestleMania, night two. But then you also see maybe this IC title that could do wonders, too, because you could set the tone. You could get the, you know, get getting everyone settled in, getting everyone invested. I would definitely fill them at. Throwing them into that. All right, we're going to go ahead and talk about the rest of WrestleMania tomorrow, um, as well as giving our predict uh, predictions on Friday. We got to think about four or five more matches that I'm intrigued to talk about. As a matter of fact, there may be a one or two matches I leave out tomorrow to finish up on Friday. But we're in it. Two, two hours of the program on, we made it to the end, on a crazy, crazy day. Tomorrow's opening day. Let's get back at it again. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. We will see um, Hunter Green on the mound. I can't wait to start dissecting and giving you my projective lineup for opening day. I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm generally excited for opening day. And uh, went out to the Bearcats baseball game last night. Got myself a poster that you see up in the background. My pennants are up. I got my red cups in the uh, sink right now because it's dirty. 
But man, let's let's get going. WrestleMania matches, more to come tomorrow and night and opening day here on the program. All right. Want to thank everyone who has tuned in. You guys are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Be sure to have those notifications on and share it with your friend. We'll be back again tomorrow. You guys are listening to us on audio platforms. I apologize for the delay. I've not gotten personal time to download and edit these videos for audio platforms. So stay tuned. All right. That is it. That's all I have for you guys today. Justin here wrapping up the throw in. And we will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you guys for listening to the throwing on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Have a great night. Take care. See you guys tomorrow. Go Reds.